under section 1.2, functions and evaluating functions. So in general, quick review, a function is something that takes an input and gives you a unique output. Let's try that again. So you need to think of it as like a little black box, or in this case, purple box, right? That takes an input and gives you an output. Now, what it does mean is that for whatever input, right? For whatever input we're talking about, we're going to get the same output every time. So this means if you have an input of one and it gives you an output of two, that's fine. That means every time you put in one, you should always get two. Now let's say you put in two. Well, maybe you get five, that's fine. Maybe you put in three and you get two again, also fine. For every input, you should have a unique output. So what doesn't work is if you were to take one and let's say you got six. So in the same function, we're getting one gives us two, one gives us two, but then one gives us six. That is no good. You have to have for any given input, a, the distinct, the same output. Now, if you were looking at a function and often we think about graphs, and this should maybe hopefully is familiar. If we're looking at a graph, the inputs would be the x, the outputs would be the, is usually written in function notation, f of x, where f represents the function in terms of x, so x would be the independent variable. This means for any given input, you get one and only one output. And this leads us to something called the, oops, sorry, vertical line test. So if you have a vertical line, if you have a graph of a function and you were past that vertical line through there, if it only intersects once, which it does here, that is a way to test to see if something is a function. Hopefully that's familiar. So there is something called the vertical line test to test vertical, vertical line test. And that's to test to see if it's a function. So that'd be function or not. So an example of not a function would be, what if we had a graph of a circle? Well, if you look at that, that would mean at this particular point right here, you're getting not one, but two possible outputs, right? So you're getting this output and this output right here not a function. And so if you're looking at the table, let's say, let's say that's x equals three, you are getting, let's say, nine for one, and let's say you're getting negative nine for the other, which means there's two possible values. And you can see that we have two different outputs for the same input, which means not a function. That's not mostly why I brought you here. It's because when people look at function notation, they slightly lose their mind. So y equals two x minus three. Y is a function of x, depends upon x. So we can write f of x equals two x minus three. This f of x, f of x, f of x, meaning for any given value of x, this whole thing, f of x, takes on a value. So for instance, this is not f times x, it means if I was looking at f of four for this particular function, it would mean I am plugging four in for the x. So it would be two times four minus three, aka eight minus three, aka five. So we'd say f of four equals five. So function notation merely indicates that you're plugging whatever that is in. Now, what does that mean in other terms? Let's say we had a function f of x equals x squared minus, sorry, let's clean that up. f of x equals x squared minus two. 
what if you wanted to find f of 3y? Could you do it? Well, these are just letters, this soda telling us that we're plugging in 3y as the independent variable, which means we'd be looking at 3y, because this function is telling us take whatever x is, square it, then subtract 2. Don't forget all of our operations. We take 3y, which is our new input, right? This is the input. Right? Take 3y, square it, and then subtract 2. Well, 3y times 3y is 9y squared squared minus 2. And that's actually it, which means that f of 3y equals 9y squared minus 2, because y and this number, they're not like terms, so we can't combine them. We are done. There, that's my crash course into functions, function notation, and how to evaluate, that is, plug-in values for a function.